Another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of water. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven with uh, this uh, universal uh, gospel that was to be carried, and the gospel had content in it. And the angel said, fear God, number one, and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Pastor, why are you hanging on this verse for three nights straight? Because if we get these verses right, then the rest of the story is going to make sense. God is saying, as we start this journey of warnings that are coming, I want you to understand that worship has to become a big deal. And the question tonight is, Pastor, why is worship a big deal? Because if you understand why it is a big deal, you're going to appreciate what comes with it. And the, the Holy Spirit took me to a place that blew my mind. Many of us have read the book of Job. Can I get a witness out there? It's amazing that the book of Job is a sandwich. Pastor, what does that mean? The first slice is worship. And the last slice is worship. Where is it? Well, the Bible says after Lucifer had attached uh, to what Job owned his children and everything. Job chapter 1 verse 21 says when he was told that everything is gone. The Bible says he fell down in worship. So Job's first response was not pulling his beard, pulling his hair. His first thing was, I've lost everything, but how I respond to my loss is worship. And in his worship, he did not say God. He did not tell God what had happened. He actually blessed God for he came naked and he will go naked and blessed be the name of the Lord. And when Job gets in chapter 2 all the way to chapter 41, you discover Job is doing life in there. But in chapter 42, the Bible says when Job prayed for his friends, Amen. Lord have mercy, God turned his life and gave him double. So to Job, he started his life with worship. His life was changed because of worship. And here comes Jesus in the story. 
And I thought Jesus would be different. Oh, no. Jesus' life was all packed with worship. The Bible says before the sun came up, he was already by the side of the mountain. Even though he was the son of God, he went out there to worship. When he wanted to select his disciples, the first thing he did, the Bible says, he spent a whole night in worship. And when he went to Lazarus' tomb, he got there and the Bible says he told his father, I know you already know and you answer me, but for their sake, I got to worship. When the young man came with five loaves and two fishes, Jesus says, I already do these things without prayer, but for their sake, here it is, let's thank you before we feed them. When he was on the cross, ah, here it is. He delayed dying till he worshipped. Death wanted to take him out. And Jesus said, it's a big deal. I don't just go as if I never came. And he said, Father, <laughs> into your hands. In other words, my last act has to be worship. And before the Holy Spirit came on the church, the church had to enter the upper room. And when they got in there, it was not a board meeting, a business meeting. It was a worship session. When you read the book of Acts, you'll discover the early church solution to problems was worship. When Peter was in jail, on death row, the church worshiped. Their solution was worship. So God now says, listen, worship is a big deal in the economy of God. Pastor, where is it? I'm glad you asked. You remember, even the children of Israel could not leave Egypt. The last act in Egypt. Can I get an amen? In fact, the reason to leave Egypt if you read, Moses went and said, we want to go worship our God. And Pharaoh says, go a little bit, but not too far. And Moses said, we're going to go very far. And Pharaoh said, just go and leave your children. And Moses said, you can't worship without your family. And Pharaoh says, just leave your silver and gold. And Moses said, then what are we going to use for offering? In other words, they came out of Egypt not as slaves on the run, but as worshipers going to worship. Lord have mercy. That's why God himself had to put his presence with them, pillar of fire by night and cloud by day. Worship is a big deal. If we get it right, you won't struggle with the day to worship. Amen. If you get it right, you won't struggle with the attitude for worship. When God says, enter his gates with praise. In other words, you don't have to ask anybody, do I wave my hand? Do I clap my hands? No. If someone has to tell you what to do, then you don't understand it. Amen. If we get this worship thing right, the world is going to be better. But what we have done is tell people what they should do before they know why they should do. So we have a lot of church members who are not Christ followers. Because as long as I do what is expected of me, then I'm in the right standing. But God is saying, we need to shake the tree. So, Pastor, why is it a big deal? Great question. Number one, here it is. When worship is a deal in your life, is it what, everybody? It's a big deal. Number one, worship increases your awareness of God. Worship increases your what, everybody? I cannot come to church on the Sabbath and struggle with you if my, if 
my awareness of God is elevated, I can see God in a child. I can see God in a song. I can hear God through a preacher. I can hear this. It doesn't matter who is with me. When I'm a worshiper, every place is worth it for me to call his name. If Jonah was here, he would let you know, Pastor, I'm the only one who prayed in the belly of a fish. Lord have mercy. Why? Because my awareness of God simply said he had to be with me there. If Paul and Silas were here tonight, they would tell you, Pastor, it was at midnight and we were in jail and we started singing hymns and we started worshiping and an earthquake had to take place and the doors of the jail had to open. Why? Why? Because we worship. If you're wondering if God hears you, God sees you. Elevate your worship and your awareness of God. Some of you say, Pastor, where is in the word? Well, here we go. Give me Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. Watch this. Psalm 139, verse 7 through 12. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Right. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Yes, sir. Uh huh. Thou art dead. Uh huh. If I make my bed in hell, mm -hmm. behold, thou art dead. Right. If I take the wings of the morning, uh -huh. dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand be. Right. And thy right hand shall hold me. Right. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, right. Even the night shall be light about me, right. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Uh -huh. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Uh -huh. So David says, where can I go? Where, where can I go? Has it ever dawned on you that whenever you read the book of Psalms, which is the hymn book of the Bible, most of those songs were written by David when he was running away from Saul? You didn't hear what I'm saying? And a psalm is a song. See, when you're a worshiper, you can sing. Oh, Lord, a message. We tell the children to sing the song with Jesus in the vessel we can want. It's time for you to tell yourself. When worship is a big deal, anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Any condition with Jesus, I can put up with it. If it's night, David says it's bright. If it's hell, David says, you are there. If I try to hide, David says, you are hiding with me. Why? Because I have developed an increased awareness of God. Amen. That's why even when he did the worst sin ever done, when he was told, you are the man, David as a worshiper says, well, are you ready for this? He ran and prayed Psalm 51. David said, I've messed up. Yes. Many of us, we mess up and leave church. Mm. Ah, David, because worship was a big deal. Amen. Instead of running away from God, he ran to God. And he said, don't, change, don't just change my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Amen. Amen. Because his worship was a big deal. If the thief on the cross could worship and say, listen, Lord, remember me. And God remembered him. If, Lord, a message. If the demons from Legion worshipped him and say, don't cast us away from here. And he heard them. What will become of a child of God? Who yields and leans to what God wants us to be. The devil is after your worship. Because if you get your worship right, everything else follow the worship. If you get this right, the mark of the beast ain't a big deal. If you get this thing right, finding out what the mark of the beast is, is easy. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Because if you get the right thing right, the fake thing will always look fake. But if you don't get the right thing right, here it is, here it is, here it is. I've noticed that as we are living in the last days, the devil is making real things look fake. 
and fake things look real. I was walking around watching people here uh, as I was just in the city a few days and, and I started seeing people with Louis Vuittons. Louis what? <laughs> Come on, talk to me with the Louis what? Vuitton. Louis Vuitton t-shirt, Louis Vuitton belt, Louis Vuitton shoes. And I started laughing because I'm in Houston, Texas, the mall where we have the original Louis Vuitton. The security that is there. You didn't hear what I'm saying. But, but here it is, the fake. Looks what, everybody? Real. Looks real. Mm. I saw everybody with an iPhone. I said, Lord, look at Africa. We have arrived. Then I discovered, oh, no. And as it is in the natural, it's happening in the spiritual. So what it does is when the church of God arises to bring people into the light, we look fake and the fake looks real. And you're going to understand in a moment why the devil is messing around with the worship because he knows if we mess it up, it doesn't matter how we look like. Give me the next text. Here it is. Acts chapter 17 verse 27. Acts 17 27. 27. Yes, sir. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. There you go. God is not far from what? Everyone. Every one of us. You need that. Let me, let me ask you a question. Anybody who has a dream car, I didn't say you're driving it, but you have it. That's why it's a dream car. Anybody? All right. <laughs> I see you. I see my relatives. Thank you so much. All right. The day you decided your dream car, how many of you went on the road and you started seeing that car? Ah. So here it is. The day you decided what your dream car was, you elevated your awareness of that car. It's not that the car was not on the road. You had not made up your mind. The day you made up your mind, you turned around. Your car was everywhere. My car, my car, my car. You even forgot it was a dream car. It was your car. Here it is. When you make worship a priority in your life and you make it a big deal, you see God on the mountain. He's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will make them right. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. In other words, your awareness, God, is it, 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 uh, I'm addicted to who he is because of my worship of him. Amen. 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 And the devil doesn't want you to do that. That's why you come to church late. You didn't hear what I'm saying? When worship is a big deal, wherever worship is, you go in. There are young people here in Arari I've discovered. I had to watch YouTube for a little bit. There's a lot of nightclubs going on here. Huh? Rich people are going to nightclubs now. All over the city. And I've discovered young people know where the fun is. They know where the what? Come and talk to me. They act like you're not one of them. You, they know where the what is? Where the fun is. And they get happy elder before they get there. Don't act like you were always in the light. You had a life before the light. They get happy before they get there. They start singing the songs before they hear the songs. How come you don't start singing the songs before you get to church? See, church has become an obstruction in our lives because the devil knows if we don't get it right, we have a lot of people, elder, who come in who have beef with God. You, you didn't hear what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. They oh, need yeah. a song for them to give an offering. Mm. And yet nobody has gone shopping and needed a song for you to pay. But when it comes to God, we need a speech, a long speech from an elder, long speech. And then we're saying, oh, to Jesus, I surrender. You know, here it is. Some of you don't even need to sing the song. Because you're lying. You know it's not all. <laughs> Instead of all to Jesus, I surrender. It's okay to say some to Jesus. A 
as long as you are saying the truth. Here's where the deal is. We are willing to stay for soccer and England league, not even Zimbabwean league. Manchester is playing and people are going to work the next morning and they'll wait for the game in the middle of the night. As long as Liverpool wins, you come to church. It's more than two hours. You got a problem? When worship is a big deal, you increase the awareness of God's presence. X says God is not far from us. Mm. And here's the second point you have. When you, when you make worship a big deal, you increase uh, your delight in God's attributes. I want to explain this a little bit. Uh, you, you increase your what? Your delight in God's what? Attributes. God is love. That's an attribute. God is faithful. God is gracious. God is merciful. When worship becomes a priority and a big deal in your life, you, you, you delight in the faithfulness of God. You delight in the forgiveness of God. You delight in the goodness of God. You delight in that. In other words, when that shows up, you find your joy in the fact that God is all that, even when you are not yet all that. So here's the deal. Because worship is not for you. Worship is for him. Worship has one audience. And the audience of true worship is one. Lord and mercy. If all of us knew when we come to church, we are coming for one. To be a Christian is a bunch of people in love with one man. Strangers in love with one person. And if I love him the way he loves me and you love him the way he loves you and we're a collection of people loving him based on what he has done to us not competing and comparing with one another, we will be amazed at the sweetness of the fellowship in the worship. The thing we have, I had one member of mine saying, Pastor, I have an issue with God. I said, what's going on? And she said, well, whenever God gives me something, he takes it away. Hello? When God gives me something, he what? Takes it away. I had another friend, elder, who believes that when bad things happen, it was God trying to teach them a lesson. Do you really think that the God who created all these things has to get you to be sick for you to learn a lesson? No, come on, talk to me. And now you're wondering, ah, pastor, ah. no, 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 no. Don't read your story into the Bible. Many of us do not pray and worship because we have a case against the person to be worshipped. It's worship that releases how I see God. Amen. It's number three. When you make it a big deal, you are going to experience God and experience his character. Experience who? Have you ever heard somebody testify that they feel God? Mm -hmm. I used to hear people say that, Elder. It used to, it elevated my worship because I, have you ever heard somebody who gives a testimony that makes your story look like you're not living? Mm -hmm. No, no, come on, talk to me. Mm -hmm. People who tell you, God told me this and God led me here and you're wondering, he has never said anything to me and you're almost tempted to, to lie. Because sometimes it's not God talking to you, it's you telling yourself on behalf of God. But there are people who have such a living, thriving relationship with God that they really hear from God. They experience God. And the enemy, here it is, every counterfeit to true worship is because the devil does not want the people of God to experience God because when you experience God, there are some things that only happen when God has been experienced. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says. Romans 1 verse 20. Let's hear what the word of God says. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world right. are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Uh -huh. Even his eternal power and Godhead. Uh -huh. So that they are without excuse. With, since creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. 
that verse on its own, Elder, it blows my mind. That these are his invisible, and yet they are clearly what? Sin. Sin how? Well, being understood by the things that are what? Made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. Now, I don't know how you read your Bible. I lose my mind when I read scripture because I don't act like I know what God is saying. God is saying he is willing for us to see and understand the invisible things of God, his eternal power, his Godhead by the things that can be seen. What that means is God is not trying to play hide and seek with you. God is saying, I'm going to make myself available to be known by you. It's Jesus who says, this is eternal life. That they may know you. In other words, it is knowing him that makes life easy and that's what he wants us to do. Eternal life is knowing God. So God wants to be known by you. So when you worship, God is going to hear. God is going to answer. God is going to incline his ear because he's seeking and desiring to be known by you. Amen. And worship is a big deal. You're going to increase your experience of God. Where God is, things change. That's why when it comes to the story of the Bible, you'll discover that there's no prescription on how people change. Are you with me? There is no prescription. Pastor, what do you mean? Well, I know where I am and I'll be careful. But here it is. The Bible simply says, if a man is in Christ Jesus, he is the what? There is no how. All you got to do is to be in him and then whatever happens in him gets in you. And you become a brand new one. Creation. Some of you may say, Pastor, what does that mean? Well, here it is. I don't know how a black cow can eat green grass and produce white milk. But it does. So here it is. God wants to be experienced. God is the only one who cannot be explained. Nobody knows God by explanation. You can only know God through his self-revelation. In other words, he wants to walk with you and talk with you and affirm his presence in you, not because you are oh God. I'm sorry. We are in a generation that thinks if I read it and claim it, then I got it. And God says, I want a relationship with you. And that relationship shall wash you. And I've noticed there are powerful people in the city. Here it is. No matter how powerful you are, God is saying, I want you to experience me. And the way to experience me is when you worship me. Amen. It's number four. Give me that Psalm 36, verse 5 and 7. Verse 5. Verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Yes. And thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. All right. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, right. O Lord. Right. Thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, yes, O God. Sir. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. There you go. The children of men put their what? Trust. Trust under the shadows of your what, everybody? Of your wings. In other words, experiencing God. When worship is a big deal. Let me, let me say this to somebody. You cannot worship God and have low self-esteem. I did not say don't go to your psychologist. That's not what I said. I'm just saying to you, there is somebody under this tent who can testify, had it not been for the Lord on my side. Our problem is that after God has blessed us and worked with us, we act as if God did nothing in us. Some of us were standing here preaching, had it not been for God, I would have been the greatest nanga, you know? If it were not for the experience of God, you don't even know what you could have become. But here it is because God intervened into your life. Here you are wanting more of the things of God. When worship is a big deal, and it is a big deal, 
you'll experience God and God's character. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11 through 13. To those of you who are writing, First Chronicles 29, verse 11 through 13. 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness right. and the power and the glory uh -huh. and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Uh -huh. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as a head above all. Right. So here it is because David now, as the people of God are moving together with it, there is this worship of God, the assembly, and David gets up there. Listen to him as a worshiper. Listen to the words that he selects. You, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, the majesty for all that is in heaven and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord. And you are exalted as head over how many things? Oh. All things. If you think like that, what is it that's going to come in your way and take you out? If you believe that God is the head of how many things? All yes. things and all power belongs to God. This is what worship does. It resets your focus and your lenses are clear. And when you worship, here it is. You cannot walk into worship and leave with the wrong picture of God. So when the angel comes up, Elder, and the angel says, and worship him. Many of us just think it's just easy like that. Well, God's selection of words matters. He says, fear, glory, judgment on the way. Now you are wondering, which judgment, what have I done? And then God says, worship me. All you got to do is worship me and this three that I told you before, the fourth one, the fourth one produces the first three. In other words, you cannot worship God and not fear him. You cannot worship God and not give him glory. You cannot, oh Lord have mercy. You cannot worship God and be open for his examination. Amen. Amen. So to a worshiper, judgment is not punitive. To a worshiper, judgment affirms. Oh yes. Amen. Oh, yes. oh, yes. In other words, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sleepless over what God thinks, what God sees. I'm grateful that God can come and see what he's doing in me. Oh, Lord, I'm let me put it this way. Anybody ever got a compliment from your parent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Let me see your hands because there's some others who, are, who need to join us. Thank you. Amen. How did that make you feel? Mm. Huh? Your father complimenting who? You. All right, think about it. Anybody who has ever been called by your totem by your father? Oh, Lord. You could have gone for a week without eating. Why? You were high and excited to be on it. So when you are a worshiper, you don't run away from the presence of God. You embrace the presence of God. Because when you read it, I'm going to get there David now, he gets to a place of saying, search me, O oh Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yes, and it's in the same Psalm 139 where you are saying, where can I go from your presence? If I go here, you are there. If I go there, you are there. If I go here, you are there. And then he then says, search me, O oh Lord. Amen. The devil doesn't want the world and Shawasha to understand that. Because when you understand how important worship is to God, here it is. We are not going to have an issue on the Sabbath worship. We are not. Anybody ever participated in someone's wedding? Whether it's a maid, bride, or you were a driver, anybody? If you loved the person, did you complain? Come on, talk. yeah, some people still complain, but... The majority of us who are normal, if you are normal, did you complain? No. And did they buy you a suit or you bought the suit? Bought the suit. Because you what? Love you loved them. Were you there on time or after the wedding? On time. Did you complain about the flowers? No. Because it was not your wedding. You loved them. You sat there and the bride is always late. And you did not complain. 
Because you are in love. That's why Jesus ends up saying, Elder, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, if love is not part of it, don't even get into it. So get to know me that you love me enough that if I tell you six days, that's all labor, and uh, you, you are in it. Here it is. Let's finish this thing. I don't want to go ahead of myself. So here's number four to those of you writing. So number one, when worship is a big deal, it increases your awareness of God's presence. Number two, when worship is a big deal, it increases your delight in God's attributes. Number four, when worship is a big deal, you experience God and you experience God's character. And number four, here it is, when worship is a big deal, and it is, you will cultivate that's the key word. An accurate picture of God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't want you to have a, a right picture of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, let me tell you. The devil's number one job is to mess up how you see God. Amen. Some people think God the Father is an angry God. Angry. He is trying to catch you doing wrong. Every time. And others have made Jesus, he's the sweet son of God. And the Holy Spirit is just the influence of God. Because if you have a wrong picture of God, then you never know what to expect and what to ask of God. Amen. Amen. Worship makes your lenses right. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Worship makes your lenses what? Because your worship of God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So it doesn't matter what I'm experiencing in my life. My worship should never be seasonal. I don't have a day when I must be low, another day I'm high, because God is constant. And the devil wants to make sure we have a wrong picture of God. When you lose your job, you lose your child, you lose your spouse, you get so angry at God that you walk away from God. Now watch this. When David lost his child, the Bible says he said to them, put my bathing water in the tub. He says, prepare my best meal. And the people said, he is out of his mind. Something is terribly wrong. And David said, listen, I worshipped when worship was needed. I, I petitioned the issue. But because he chose to do what he wanted to do, his will be done. Because he had a clear picture of God. Psalm, one, Psalm 18, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 18, 1 and 2. Verse 1. Yes, sir. I will love thee, O Lord. Uh -huh. My strength, let me take it again. I will love thee, O Lord, right. my strength. Uh -huh. Verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my higher tower. See, when, when I read the book of Psalms, I get jealous. I get what, everybody? I get jealous. I used to memorize every verse. Now, I got to a place of saying, if memorization does not produce originality in my relationship with God, then what's the use? David is saying to God, I love you. When was the last time you simply just say to God, I love you? Not, not that I'm loved by God. When was the last time you said to God, you had such a picture of God that you could not help yourself and say, God, I love you, Lord. I, I, I just love you. I can't keep it to myself. I got to tell somebody I love God. He says, my horn, my strength, my buckler. Look at all the descriptions he has on God. The picture of God to him was so huge that he saw him in everything. Worship is a big deal. Many of the Christian hymns that we sing, What Can Wash Away My Sins, and the rest of the hymns, if you read the history of them, they were written by believers who were in crisis. The only thing that got them to have a song in a crisis, they had an accurate picture of God. And worship clears the cleanses 
and the lenses of your soul. If you are to see God right, Job says, listen, he was smelling and dying. And you remember in Job chapter 19, what did he say? 25, 26, 27. He says, I know. Not I feel. No, 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 no. I don't know why I am going through this. But one thing I know. My redeemer. Now, now I pause right there. Because he, Lord, can you call him mine when you're hurting? Only a worshiper can see his, even when you don't understand why he put you in it. Job says, I will see him with my own what? Even though my skin, I'm dead, I will see him for myself. In other words, I don't even know how he's going to do it. But I will see him myself. Child of God, worship is a big deal. The first angel is just saying to this city and to all of us in this place, if you're going to understand the rest of the prophecy, the rest of the things that are going to come and prepare right for them, even the stuff that came before this one, just get right with God. Amen. And here's the last one, then we go home. When worship is a big deal, it, oh Lord, write this down. It increases your desire to be changed. When worship is a priority, I've heard people say, Pastor, change is hard. And I started laughing at that. Because the life of a Christian is constant change. Change is not hard. Growth is hard. If you are to grow from where you are, you must make a choice. All right, somebody look at me funny. Let me ask you a question. Anybody who found yourself one day many years ago with a beard? Anybody? I mean, you did not have beard one day, and you found yourself with some beard the other day. Oh, yeah. All right, did you make a deal with the beard? No. Change just what? Okay. Happened. Anybody who had black hair and you woke up one day, there were some gray things walking in your hair? Was that hard? No. It's changed. It's just what? Happened. Happened. Anybody who was young once upon a time, now you are old. I know everybody here feels young, but is it? Feeling young and being old are two different things. <laughs> anyway, so here it is. So the deal is life just has to happen. But when it comes to growth, you must make a choice. When worship is a big deal, God increases your appetite to be changed. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Let me give you a verse. I want Bible to speak here. Colossians 3 verse 10. Verse 10. And have put on the new man. Right. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on the new man, which is what everybody? You are going to be different. If Christ is in, then life is going to be different. And let me help somebody understand as we go into the next night. Here it is. God delights in changing you. I, I, I miss my church. God's number one job is to change you. People came to church not expecting change. We, we, we gave them false advertisement. If all of us were to testify that we once were lost in sin, what you see here today has been a process of sanctification, a process of growth, a process of change, because God specializes in changing people. And here it is. Give me the next one. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It has this to say. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Verse 18. But we all with open face beholding, right. as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, uh -huh. are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Right. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. All right. Change is part of our story. And worship is the fuel in it. 
The longer I serve him, that's what the song says, the sweeter. Come on, talk to me, somebody. In other words, he was not this sweet when I started. But the longer I want everybody, Lord and mercy. Here's what I've discovered. I discovered if I walk into a supermarket and my wife is in the supermarket and she's in a corner and I don't know she's in the supermarket, if she's on the phone, she's on the what? I can tell that my wife is here. Many of you have done it. If a person you live with is in a supermarket, you didn't know they were in the one supermarket and you don't even need to see them to know they're in the one supermarket. All they need to do is to talk to somebody or talk on the phone. Why? Because you know their voice. What a mess. If you being evil can be known by your voice, that's why Jesus says, my sheep, oh Lord of mercy, they know my voice. Why? Because I've been with them long enough that even if they're in death, they hear my voice. In sorrow, they hear my voice. In the storm, they hear my voice. Why? Because they've worshipped me long enough. Amen. Lord of mercy. That's why the devil does not want us to get it. We're going to get to the second and the third angel. Here it is next Sunday. But here's what's going to happen. You need to get it right so that the rest makes sense. Amen. He does not want you to know if it's God talking to you. A young man came to me and said, Pastor, how can I tell if it's God talking to me? And I wanted to be deep. And God says, well, there's no need to be deep. Ask them, if they know when their father talks to them. I said, how can you tell when your father talks to you? And the young man was puzzled. It was crazy. How do you ask that kind of question? Because he's my father. I said, no, don't be angry with me now. How can you tell? He said, because I know him. I said, oh, I like this. I said, how do you know him? He said, pastor, please. That's my father. I said, don't be mad with me. How do you know he's your father? And he said, what are you trying to say? <laughs> and I said, the same way it is in the natural. The longer you serve God, if you can trust your father who lied to you, could not provide everything you needed, and you still call him father, imagine the God who owns it all, has it all, if you stick with him long enough. So to the question, I don't want to pray aloud. Maybe the devil is listening. It's only people who are not worshippers who think like that. Okay, can I get an amen? I remember playing with my friends back in the day. And we would play and we had a rule in our house. The sun was never to go down before you were in the house. So now sometimes soccer was too good that you would break the law and try to just move a little bit. All my mother would do is stand there and call one time. Not the full name. Full name was too dangerous. Just a half a name. In the middle of the game, your friends would just see you falling into order. Is there anybody who felt that? I mean, all of a sudden, hey, hey, I'm going home. I'm going. I mean, the game is good, but mommy has called. Here it is. Worship is, is relational. When you have a relationship with God, there is nothing that God can ask of you that you cannot do. Your desire to be changed created me. A clean heart. David did not come with an excuse. He said, oh, 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 in fact, when he was told, he said, that man must die quickly. And then he was told, you are the man. And instead of saying, what do you mean? That's when he says, oh, fix me, Jesus, right now. My sin is before me continually. I have a stained conscience. And the only one who can clean it up is you. I'm not running to men. I'm running to you because in worship you can fix it. So I don't know who has an issue, has a story. Some, give me some, uh, 139, 23, and 24. We're almost done. 23. Verse 20, Psalm 139, 23, and 24. 23. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Uh -huh. Try me and know my thoughts. Uh -huh. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Right. And lead me in the way everlasting. Isn't this amazing? 
Search me. Oh God, know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties. Please see if there's any wicked way in me. How many of us can pray this prayer tonight? Because many of us, we know we're already wicked before we pray. In fact, we don't pray because we are wicked. And yet, wicked people are the ones who must pray. You didn't hear what I'm saying. The enemy is making sure because the picture of God is wrong, elder. The, the sinners have been told God won't take you. Because you are too bad. You don't know how many people have come in and say, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. God cannot forgive me. I've done so much. And yet God says, where sin abounds, grace much more. So if you get the right picture of God, he who is forgiven much, loves much. For you to be forgiven much, you must have sinned much. And God is saying, I've no problem with it. All I need is for you to bring it to me and I'll fix it for you. Amazing. And here's the last text that we go home. Psalm 143 and verse 10. The angel said, worship him. And I just wanted to set these three nights, our course together. Because we're about to go in a breeze that you don't want to miss. If you get it right when it comes to worship then you're going to discover that everything is going to lock in. 143 in verse 10. Verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. Lord and mercy. For thou art my God. Right. Thy spirit is good. Right. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Lord. So here is David says, I have increased my desire to be changed. How do we know? Teach me to do your what? Thy will. Thy will. If this city, if it was the prayer, and we believe it is, of the city, that's why the tent is here. Because someone, God heard somebody wanting to do the will of God. And the will of God, you have to be taught for you to do the will of God. In other words, there's an increased desire to be changed. I'm better than this. There has to be more than this. I've gone to the prophets. They've prophesied on me, but there's an emptiness on the inside. God, what's your will? I got all the money I need, but I'm still empty on the inside. Teach me your what, everybody? Your will. And worship guides us there. And I like what he says. He says, listen, I like this. This really blew my mind. He said, your spirit is good. Ah, I'm not scared of him. He's good for me. And then he said, not only that, lead me in the land of what? Uprightness. Uprightness. I want to do what is right. So tonight you're here. And you want to say, Pastor, come be easy. I, 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 I know I've been coming to church, but this, this worship is not a priority in my life. In order for worship to be a priority, it is, it centers God where God should be in your life. The angel is the everlasting gospel because if it is the true gospel, there must be good news in who God is. Not only in what God has done. We are not in love only with his gifts and his blessings, but we are in love with the person of God. Again, and you want to say, Pastor... I, I, I never looked at it this way. I never looked at it this way. I've been coming to church. Some have been coming to church for years. It I, I don't matter which church you go to, but you say, wait a minute. Worship has never been central in my life. And I want God to renew and revive my love for him. This is it. Someone may say, I've never been to church. I mean, this is my first time coming to this tent. I was invited to come in. Well, that's the spirit of God that brought you here. And they want to say, listen, I need to fall in love with this God, pastors, as you're coming in. And you want to say, listen, pastor, I need to choose this God for myself. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anybody? You want to say, listen, I see your hand. I see your hand in the back. Anybody else? All right. Some of you may say, pastor, just my hand is not enough, but I need, I need special prayer. I need prayer for me to realign with God. I'm going to ask you to stand. Is there anyone? All right here we go we thank god for you we thank god for you and, and some of you may say not only pastor do i need the realignment but here it is I, I i want this god to be mine 
I've been in church, but I want him to be my personal savior. I want him to be mine. I want to accept him as my personal savior. If baptism is going to happen, uh, if I need to have Bible studies, whatever it takes, I want to join a church that thinks this way, that worship matters, and who we worship matters the most. If you're here, let me see your hand. Say, listen, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior, but I, it has to start. Is there anybody? You want to say, listen, I want to restart. This is it. I want to make sure that I do it right. If you are there and you are shy to come to the front, we're going to ask you as everybody lives, just nick back up to the front and let's talk about it. Let's pray together. We believe that we came this way because God has a people who are to be saved in this season. I believe it. How about you? I believe that somebody is, we are set here for someone's salvation. Say, if it's you, don't go home without making the decision that invites Christ into your heart and let him be Lord of your life and you'll never regret it. We're bowing our heads and we're praying, Father, we are grateful for what you have done here. You have never gathered your people together and wasted time, but you have always gathered your people and invested eternity in their hearts. So here we are standing declaring that Lord we need a better alignment with your will and God we thank you for being the God who does not specialize in embarrassment but you are the God who accepts us and woos us and Lord you, you have unconditional acceptance to all who come to you through Jesus Christ so I pray for that one who may be saying a prayer in their heart the heart is racing it's them who are who's supposed to say yes. And God, I pray, Holy Spirit, with your small, still voice, sweet voice, I pray that you may continue to nudge them on this decision to say yes to you. And I pray that, Master, as we leave this place, may revival be the blessing upon your people. Keep us safe. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Jesus, my friend of Calvary.